Joseph. Hey, hey, Steve. Hey, Joe. <laughs> How long is it? How long has it been? Eighteen hours, right? About eighteen hours since our last two-hour phone conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and now we've added the video component. That's that right. Can, so we can see how crazy we look. Yeah. Yes. Actually, I think we're looking pretty good. I'm not too, not too yeah, shabby. Not too shabby. Getting ready. I, yeah. I loved, uh, I loved our conversation the other day because. Uh, you know, all through these years, we've we've done so many fun things together, uh, but never really just the two of us. Yeah. And uh, I've always wondered. I said, I wonder if that's going to actually happen. You know, and I'm so happy that it's happening now. It's happening. It's yeah. actually happening. Music is flowing, and mm. dates are booked. Yeah. The band, the crew, yeah. the venues, everything. It's everything. Cool. I even yeah. got a bus with a with a bed in the back. <laughs> We grew up on Long Island and uh, right right in the same area. And uh, at that time in the 70s, uh, progressive rock and, and 70s rock, Led Zeppelin, Queen, Aerosmith, all these bands were very popular and, and I was really digging them. And I was very shy about letting anybody n know that I played the guitar. And my friend John Sergio uh, gave me Joe's number and I had heard of Joe as, you know, one of the older cool guys, <laughs> but I didn't really know how uh, he could, uh, how he played, or I was just very eager to learn something on the guitar because I didn't know anything about it. Every time I broke a string, I had to play with a, one less string, you know? And I'll never forget the first time, I believe, as far as my memory serves me, the first time I met Joe, I went to his house and I knocked on the door and nobody answered. And then I knocked again, and all of a sudden, the, do the door opened really slowly, and I see these eyes peeking out. I don't know if you remember <laughs> that. You're kind of pranking me a bit, because I was scared to death, you know? And, uh, but then he goes, ah, come on in here. And uh, we started. Actually, I think Frankie Munn was with me. Oh, really? Yeah, I think I, I don't know if he was it during the first lessons or a little while after that. I, I yeah, I remember. First thing I thought is, who is this little punk, and how does he know where I live? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, we grow we grew up in a great time mm -hmm. and a great set of neighborhoods it was really when you think back it was idyllic so i had nothing to worry about so maybe i was punking him a little bit you know and um which is what i should have done and i can't i can't remember if frank was like hiding behind you he certainly could have at the time yeah uh but yeah it, it, it very i have the uh the memory the photograph of that moment when i looked at you the first time standing at the front door with oh, the oh, stringless cool. guitar. Yeah, uh, yeah. Is... <laughs> <laughs> it was a Tesco Del Rey. You remember those? Like a Sears catalog special. Yeah. And yeah. They, it was red and it had like three pickups and all these switches and a Bigsby. <laughs> oh, it was fantastic. Joe actually had a bit of a reputation in, in our school uh, because he played and he hung out with... Uh, the, the rough kids, you know, and, uh, you know, Calavagna and all those guys. Yeah. And he was older and he could play. So it, it, there was a, a respect and a, an, ex, an excitement. And I didn't feel like I had anything to lose because I couldn't play at all. You know, I mean, I could, I, you know, I, I really didn't expect uh, that he would find me to be unteachable or... Uh, not good enough because I was not, I, I was completely a beginner. But very quickly, once Joe, I saw his hands on the guitar. I mean, that's like the lasting image that I really have of all the years, because it was like five years that I took lessons, five, six years on and off. It, there was a period of time there where you, you, you moved to Japan for a while. Yeah. And then you came back and I continued. And then once you left for Berkeley, California, that, that was the end of our lessons. But that was some years. And um, I always say this, you know, whenever I think of what I've taken away, I, I could go on and on, you know, what I learned. 
But every time uh, you would touch the guitar, whether you were showing me an exercise or anything, there, it sounded like music, and there was a, 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 a delicacy and a, a class and a, a control with what you did, what, everything you did, and a creativity. I remember once, <laughs> do you remember uh, you used to have like group lessons where you'd get like three or four of your students? I remember once it was myself, Rich Joner, Frankie oh, Strassel, yeah. and we all came over for a group lesson, and you were pushing us to be um, creative, and yeah. you did something that I still haven't seen anybody do. You had your Hagstrom, I think it was a Hagstrom. And yeah, it had Hagstrom a three. It had a whammy bar, right? Yeah. And yeah. you put you you put the bar out like this, and you put the whammy bar up against your dresser. <laughs> yeah. And you would play and just go like this, and it would bend. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. fuck, man, that is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Coming out with a line of dressers that is a uh, right now they're just on the rider. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and yeah, they're they're big. They're, you know, it's not a little bigger than a distortion pedal, uh, but I'll make small ones actually, small miniature dressers there that you, you can go. get in this little box. <laughs> uh,